In this video, we will be demonstrating how to use the Logic Builder application to create basic alarms. This general knowledge will help in all areas related to setting up control logic, including setting up fault detection diagnostic rules in the FIN framework. We will illustrate how Logic Builder works by an example in which we will create a very simple alarm that will run on our VAVs and trigger when the temperature gets too hot. Before we dive into that, here are a couple of views of other types of logic that Logic Builder can create, such as a connector status program that can check connected points to gather the status of their connector and throw an alarm, or a fault detection diagnostic rule that identifies when an A2 damper is stuck open. Now let's dive into the example of how to build a basic temperature alarm for VAVs. One of the most important features to recognize in FinStack is context sensitivity. Context sensitivity is determined in the navigation header and basically allows for the FIN framework to better understand what the user wants to do and, in turn, supply the user with related tools and wizards to help move as efficiently as possible. So with that said, the first thing we want to do is set our navigational context to one of the equipment that we'd like to create an alarm for. Once the navigational context is set, the next step is to launch the Logic Builder application by opening the App Launcher menu on the top left of the UI, then clicking on the Logic Builder tile and selecting the option labeled New. This will immediately bring up a Create New Program wizard that will assist us in creating a new Logic Builder program. The first property on the wizard allows for us to name the program itself. So in my case, I'm creating an Overheated Zone alarm program. Below that is a description field that can be filled out to describe the program in more detail. The third property field determines what tags the program will eventually be running on. This section here is what makes using programs and tagging so powerful. With this feature alone, we are going to be instructing one single program to run on multiple equipment based on their tags. Now since we had already set up our context before opening the wizard, we now see that the software automatically took the tags from our context equipment and filled it in for us. The points section below displays a list of points based on the selected context. This section allows for us to select the points we'd like to use in our program. For this basic alarm, our end goal is to create an if-then statement to tell the program to throw an alarm if the VAB's room temperature goes over a certain temp. So with that said, the only point I'll be needing is the room temp. If your alarm requires more than one point, simply hold down the control key on your keyboard to begin selecting multiple points. The final section below offers us the ability to add in additional tags, project variables, or absolute points. For this demonstration, I will not be needing any of these options, so I will skip over them for now. Once you're done filling out the Create Program Wizard, press the OK button to officially create your new Logic Builder program. The mini app menu on the right will automatically update to show the properties of the program we just created. To begin editing the program, select the Edit option. This will open the program's main routine grid. Now we can begin creating our alarm logic. The first block we're going to need is an if block. If you look down to the bottom left corner, you'll see a section called the block library. This section contains all of the available logic builder blocks that can be used within the editor and also features a search menu for you to easily sort between the available blocks within the library. However, before we go into the block library, I'm going to recommend a quicker workflow for creating blocks on the fly. To do this, simply click on the empty node on the bottom half of the red routine block within the grid, which will bring up a link tied to the end of your cursor. Click on the empty space within the grid to automatically bring up a new wizard that contains options that allow you to search and create new blocks or to create other variables on the fly. Click on the choose statement block section and begin a search for the if block. Once it appears in the dropdown, I'll select the if block and hit OK to create a newly linked if block. So now we want to create a condition for the if block. To do this, we'll need to designate a block to grab the value of our VAB's room temperature point. The quickest way to do this is to navigate your attention to the variable list located in the menu to the far left of the interface. There, you'll see two options. One option will create a block to get the value of your variable and the other option will create a block that sets the value of your variable. Select the Get option and drag it into the grid. Next, we'll go ahead and create a greater than condition by selecting the empty node in the room temp block and clicking on the grid. 
This time, we'll type in the words greater than into the search section, which will bring up symbols that represent the available greater than blocks. In this case, I will select the greater than or equal to block and hit OK. So now that we have the greater than block linked and in the grid, now we have to set a value for it to compare against. In this scenario, our temperature is being measured in Fahrenheit, so I will type in a value of 80 into section B of the block to set a comparison value. Now before I go ahead and tie this condition into the if block, I want to add a small delay to ensure that the condition isn't triggered too prematurely. I'll repeat the same block creating process, only this time I will create a condition delay block. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will set the delay value to 15 seconds. Once that's done, I'll tie my condition delay into the condition node located on the bottom left of the if block. Okay, so now that we have our condition set, the next step is to set up our if then and if else statements. The if then statement is triggered if the condition is met. So in this case, if the condition is met, we want our alarm to be true. So what I'll need for this is a variable to represent the true and false states of my alarm, which in this case can be best represented by a Boolean variable. To do this, I will repeat the same block creation workflow from earlier, only this time I will be creating a variable instead of a block by selecting the variable option and clicking OK. This will now bring up the create new variable wizard, which will allow me to name the variable and select a data type. I will name it the overheated zone alarm variable and select bool as the data type. The next wizard asks you what you'd like the default value to be. So in this case, I will set it to false. Once we hit OK, the wizard will automatically create a new variable on the left and also a new set block for that variable in the grid. Make sure to set the value of the newly created set block to true by clicking on the checkbox next to the to option on the bottom left corner of the box. Now we need to set the if blocks else statement, which we can do by grabbing the set option from the alarm variable in the left menu and dragging it into the grid. Make sure to tie the block into the else section of the if block and set it to false by unchecking the box on the bottom left. This would complete the basic logic portion of our alarm program. So just to read out what we've created, our logic is saying, if the room temp value of the given equipment is greater or equal to the value of 80 for more than 15 seconds, set the alarm variable to true. If the value is not greater or equal to 80, set the alarm variable to false. So now this leaves us at the last and final step, which is to set up an alarm block. To do this, we will want to switch over to the built-in alarm routine grid by clicking on the alarm tab located towards the top left section of the screen. Now we'll want to bring in the alarm block by going into the block library on the bottom left and searching for the alarm block and then dragging it into the grid. This block will represent the actual alarm that gets thrown and all of the general information that will be displayed in the alarm badge. The first thing we'll want to do is link it up to the routine start. And then we'll want to select the variable that is going to trigger the alarm, which in this case is our Boolean variable created in the previous routine. We can then go in and fill out the title, instructions, and priority for this type of alarm. For users that are using alarm topics and subscriptions, you can even add a unique marker tag to the alarm in the bottom section there. Once you're done filling out your alarm block, be sure to hit the save option which is located on the top left menu and is represented by a floppy disk icon. Once the program is saved, it will go into effect immediately and begin running on the program on targets. You can view the targets the program is running on by clicking on the Show All Targets tab on the top right of the menu. If a target is selected, the menu will simulate the live data of that target and display it on the variable list below. Once an alarm is thrown, an alarm notification will appear on one of the corners of your screen and can be viewed by opening the Alarms app and navigating to that specific context. All right, so hopefully this demonstration has helped you understand how to use the Logic Builder application to create a basic alarm for your system. Within just a few minutes, we harness the power of tagging and combine that with our alarm logic program to run on various amounts of equipment. And as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, this basic knowledge is just the start to all the control logic possibilities that can be put together using the Logic Builder.